what's up everyone i hope you're doing great today now in today's video i'm going to share with you a couple of visions that uh, an evangelist sent in this man is called evangelist michael sean from the united states and this man claims he has been to some part of africa and india to share the gospel and somewhere along the line all these years god has given him revelations and then visions of what is yet to happen okay and based on what he said I just want to give a recap. This man claimed God gave him a vision of Obama and what Obama is about to do. And then also a vision of Russia and China, a terrible event that is about to take place against the United States of America. And this man also claims that God revealed to him a state in the U.S. that represents the mystery Babylon. He also gave a revelation of Elon Musk and an invented ship that is about to also take place okay so i want you to just pay attention and then listen to this man as he brings out his message he sent in a video which i'm about to play out to you but one important thing i want you to do is to pray to god over this message and seek discernment from him to confirm the truth and the validity of this message i also want you to like this video and then share it out with your friends and family so that they may also receive the message of the lord i'm going to leave a link to his youtube channel evangelist sean michael has a channel on youtube which he has other god's message on which i think is also important for you to listen okay so just pay close attention as I play out this video to you. God bless you. Hi everyone. Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I wanted to go over, uh, like I wanted to tell you some dreams and visions that Father Yahweh and Jesus have been giving me over the years, for the last 10 years of evangelism and uh, like just doing Christian outreach to get Bibles and get, get the gospel out to like India, Africa, Pakistan, and just doing uh, evangelism and outreach for Christ here in America. Uh, so, uh, Father God has been showing me a lot of dreams, like, they started, like, when Obama was president, like, uh, in one vision, God showed me that Obama, uh, he was, he's an antichrist, and during his presidency, it was probably, like, I believe it was around eight years ago, and all these dreams and visions, like, have been since I was like 33, since I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And uh, basically, uh, one of the first visions I've had, right? Uh, I was sleeping, right? And I, because I would listen to the Bible even even while I'm sleeping, and uh, it went into a vision where. I was in a room with Obama and his eyes were blacker than coal. He was possessed, right? And uh, I looked at him and I said, why do you want to kill three quarters of the world's population? Why? And his eyes were blacker than coal and he looked at me and then, I'll, and then he, I got frustrated because he wouldn't answer me and I kicked the door open and I went out, like in the vision, I went outside and all there was like so much chaos in America, right? And then in the vision, a map flew up in my face. And I was a thousand feet above America, right? In the vision, and I saw uh, Russia and China nuked Florida and New York, and then they invaded our country from Canada. And, uh, and I was on the ground, like in the vision, and they were kicking me saying, take your vaccine or die. And that was like eight years ago. And I know that God shows you like stuff, like he reveals the future, right? And uh, in dreams and visions. Uh, and then anyways, uh, so I believe that dream, like it says in Joel 2.28, in the end times I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall have dreams, your old men shall have visions. Upon my handmaids I shall pour out my spirit 
and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. In Acts chapter 2, 17, it says the same thing. In the end times, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall have dreams. Your old men shall have visions upon my hands. I shall pour out my spirit, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So don't resist, don't resist the Holy Ghost. Receive Jesus and ask him to keep revealing secrets to you uh, through the spirit of truth, right? So I believe what God was showing me in that dream is actually uh, that New York is actually Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. Uh, it says there, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked to me saying, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, right? Waters represents peoples in the Bible, right? People, like large groups of people. And uh, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the habitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she carried me. See, if you think about it, America uh, gives abominable filth to the whole world, right? With the ungodly rap music where they worship devils and they talk about drugs and violence and women are whores and uh, materialism and soulish demonic music gangster lifestyles and just ungodly music right and then pornography and ungodly television shows reality tv just garbage right pollution for your mind and your spirit right so and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman is arrayed with purple and scarlet. Uh, and I do one with gold and precious stones and pearls and had in her hand with a golden cup of the abomination. The filthiness of her fornication, her forehead was named written. Mystery Babylon Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and I saw her in a marvel with great amazement. Right? So if you go on uh, to uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15 through 18, I believe this is what God showed me. Then he said unto me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits were mul people's multitudes, nations, and tongues. So think about it. Uh, New York, Babylon, you know, at the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis, God scattered all the inhabitants of the earth at that time because they had one language. And they built the tower up to God and he scattered them to the four winds of the earth and because they had one language and he confounded them, right? So that's why we have ethnicities, people groups, uh, different nationalities, right? And different tongues and dialects, right? Because God did that. And that's... Babel, you know, different languages, Babylon, New York has every ethnic group and so does America, America does. It's a melting pot, right? So, and the horn which you saw was beast. See, the waters which you saw in verse Revelation chapter 17, 15, were harlot, where the harlot sits, right? America is a whore, goes a whore and after other gods, the leaders go a whoring after after money and greed in DC. Our peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten whores which you saw with beasts will hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked. So right now, look at this. You see the BRICS nations now forming. Like I saw there was like ten nations too, right? It makes me wonder. There's ten horns, right? That will make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn it with fire, right? So New York, it's saying here, right? New York will be burnt with fire, but God had put it in her hearts for this purpose, to be of one mind, to give her kingdom unto the beast and until the words are fulfilled, right? And it says that, you know, in verse, in chapter 18, 18 of the book of Revelation, after these things, I saw another angel coming down and have a great authority, illuminated with great glory, Primarily with a voice saying, Babylon the Great has fallen. New York is fallen. They become the dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul bird, a cage of every unclean and hated bird. All the nations were drunk with the wine of a wrath of a fornication. <laughs> Pornography, ungodly rap music, 
you know, the celebrities worship Satan and do witchcraft live and on TV. They pay homage to Satan, like live on the TV right in front of your face. And you continue to buy their filth and you play it and listen to it. Not, I'm not saying you, but Americans with her and her merchants of the earth became rich to the abundance of her luxury. And I, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest she share of her plagues, lest she receive of her plagues for her sins have reached heaven. America's sins have reached the heavens. It's time to repent and give your life to Christ and surrender to him and live righteously. And God has remembered her iniquities. Read her to hear as she has rendered to you and repair of double according to the works of the cup, which she has mixed, mixed for her double. In the pleasure, she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously. Luxuriously. In the same manner, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, right? Lady Liberty, I sit as a queen and I'm no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come up in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. God's been telling me to pray against famine, too. So, guys, give your life to Christ, bro. Make heaven. The kings of the earth committed fornication with luxuries, where they will weep and lament for smoke of her torment and burning, and standing in law just to fear of torment. Alas, last for the state, great city Babylon, New York, that mighty city, for in one hour judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. And, and for no one buys their merchandise ever. Merchandise, gold and silver, precious stones. Yeah. So, uh, that's one vision. That God gave me about New York. Revelation 17 and 18. And uh, another one God gave me was... If you refuse to come to Christ and repent of your sins, uh, hell. It's another vision God gave me in my sleep. And also another uh, another biblical reference for uh, your dreams and visions is actually found in the book of Job. I think it's chapter... I'll look up the reference for that later in the book of Job. Actually, I think it's Job 33, 15. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Job chapter 33, verse 15, it says, In a dream and a vision in the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while swimming in their beds, he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, in order to keep them from the deed and conceal pride from many, bring us back from the life of the pit, perishing by the sword. So, I always ask God, like, why do you, why do you do this, Lord? You show me these things in dreams, and it's, it, it's actually uh, a gift that God put in me since I'm a child, and uh, makes me weep and cry because I see these things and I know what's coming, and I try to tell everybody about Jesus and like the zeal I have for people to come to Him. It, like, it makes me angry at me, it makes me hate me, but. You said if they hated me first, they will hate you. But it's just that I want to see everybody go to heaven. Is my heart. And like God, like his heart is that no one should perish, right? And if, and if some, and if this is coming to America, like, yeah, a lot of times, like, I'll, I'll see this and I'll cry and I'll pray against it. We can just get more people to come to Christ and repent and just pray. Uh, so anyways, uh, in Luke 16, 19, it says, uh, it talks about the rich man and Lazarus, and uh, it says, uh, there was a rich man who pulled the purple fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid in his gate, desiring to be fed with crumbs, which fell on the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, so it was the beggar that died, and he was carried in the angels of Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. 
And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus. And he dipped dip his finger in water and cooled my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember in your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus evil things. Now he's comforted and you are tormented. Uh, uh, I'll repent because hell is a real place. And uh, Jesus said it to where the, the, the worm dieth not and the thirst is never quenched. And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 and 15, it says there that uh, every name that's not found written in the of life slain from the foundation of the world will be cast in the lake of fire, right? And uh, which is the second death. So like uh, one day, one night when I was sleeping, uh, my bed opened up and an angel like took me in a tour over hell and I could just see could see it like it was more alive than than you looking at me right now and it was like a like jesus said like a burning fiery furnace like <laughs> like that noise in a furnace like it makes that like i don't know I, I don't know how to describe that noise but it was horrible and like i could just i saw the flames in hell like like just like they were licking at me and I could smell sulfur and like I was in a cell in the vision and there was a demon at the door about to torture me for eternity right and he looks back at me and I said from my spirit God is this forever and, he, and then Jesus sent the Holy Spirit down and pulled me out it was like a greenish bluish orb Whoosh. And then in the vision, I'm in the arms of Jesus in a church, in the pew, crying on his shoulder, saying, Jesus, my Lord, my God, and my Savior, I worship you, I praise you, and I thank you, my Lord. And then, like, I went and went into another vision where I fell to the lowest hell in the bottomless pit, and I cried out, Jesus, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I send up to heaven, you're there. Where could I escape your presence? And he took me out again, delivered me, right? Sort of like Jonah in Jonah chapter 2, where it says uh, the, the cords of Sheol wrapped him about and the pangs of hell encompassed him about and he cried unto the Lord and he delivered it, right? And even David had visions and stuff like that too. So I guess I'm in good company, right? But that's not my destination because I, I got the Lord and I got much treasures in heaven. Right? So, uh, please repent for every day. Pray. Don't go to hell, okay? You don't have to. Jesus defeated the enemy, right? In Revelation 118, but hold on, he was dead and alive forevermore. And I got the keys of death, hell, and Hades, right? So, like, God has been showing me these stuff, like these things in dreams for the longest time, right? And also, uh, July of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 2022, I had a vision of, uh, my head being slit open and my skull being opened and like a chip being inserted in my brain. And then I'm at a table with Elon Musk and he's in before him and he grabs my hands and he said, let me bless you, Sean. And I said, no, let me bless you and tell you about Jesus Christ. So fast forward now to uh, almost July this year. Elon Musk has FDA approval, right? They put a chip in the brain of a human. It's called the brain chip interface or Neuralink, right? So therefore, uh, God is showing me that... He is actually rolling out the beginning stages of the Mark of the Beast 666, right? And uh, that's found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 18. And it says, He was granted power to give breath unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, slave and free to receive a mark in their right hand 
which will be an RFID microchip. I've already had visions of that too. And, or in their foreheads, which is the brain chip interface. There's a man now who just got a chip in his brain and he can move a mouse, right? And uh, so it says, here's wisdom. Let him as understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is six, three, score, and six. WWW, Vav, 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 which means 666 in Hebrew. Uh, the image of the beast is a quantum supercomputer. And uh, uh, if Elon Musk is not the Antichrist, he's one of them, and they will tie humankind. All those names who are not in the land of the life to the internet. And uh, so, therefore, come to Jesus. Make sure your name's in the land of the book of life. Read your Bible. Live for him. Cry for him to fill you with the Spirit. Worship him. Live a life of righteousness. Serve God. Be a soul winner. Right? Uh, so, also, uh, after I saw this, I'm just like, you know, I'm praying the Lord's Prayer, just crying in my room, saying, God, like, you show me hell, you show me all these things, like, and I'm like, I'm saying the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, in Matthew chapter 6, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive all those who trespass against us, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil and from the evil one, so that is the kingdom, and now is the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I was saying, Father, you said, thy kingdom come. Jesus, you said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? How can, how will I know if you, if I've never seen heaven, Lord? I just kept asking him, right? And then I was just reading Isaiah 53, saying, and crying, and saying, Jesus, I love you. I know you've done this for me. And I thank you and I love you, right? You gotta be thankful to God that He sent you a Savior, Jesus, that you don't have to perish and go to hell and you could have eternal life, right? And then after this life of just battles and trials and tests, that you can be in heaven with God, right? And with Jesus. And you can receive a crown of life, like in Second Timothy four eight. The Lord told me that in a dream the other day. Uh, that scripture, uh, it says there that, uh, that God has laid up for us a crown of righteousness in heaven, not only for, 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 for me, but for all those who love his appearing, right? Where we're going to, where we're going to get a glorified body like Jesus, right? And he's going to wipe away all of our tears. And, uh, so that like, God has been showing me all this stuff over a year, over the, over time, like, there's times where I would go, I would go to bed, like, and I'll, I would travel back in time, like, I'd, I'd see, like, like, biblical things, like, uh, the third, like, Solomon's Temple, so, and, and I, and saw, like, biblical characters like Solomon, like, I've seen, like, Derek Prince in Visions already, uh, but, so, if you're alive, right, and you're listening to me, I ask you to start earnestly, sincerely start praying a lot. Start reading your Bible and start seeking God. Uh, because it says in Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain grace and mercy and help in times of need, right? So through Jesus, you can go to the Father of all creation and, and prayer and make petition and supplication right concerning your life your family the course of this you could be an intercessor and pray for the world leaders for for i don't know if, i think that we should we should probably pray that trump will become president because we're in trouble <laughs> if we don't become president but only jesus could help us we can't put our trust in men right Matthew ten twenty eight it says, uh, "Don't fear him that could destroy your body, but fear him that could destroy your body and soul in hell." I tell you, fear him, and that's the word is of Jesus Christ. You can look it up. Matthew ten twenty eight, uh, like the dream of hell he gave me. 
Do not fear what man can do to you. Fear him, I tell you, Yahweh, God, who can destroy your body and soul in hell. Fear him. Okay? And uh, like I was saying, Hebrews 4 and 16, I, I like fasted for two years a lot. And I, so, and I was reading Isaiah 53, Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 7, saying, Jesus, you do this, God, I will do that. I, and then <clears throat> I was caught up to, to heaven, like in Revelation 4 2, like John on the Isle of Patmos. And then Exodus 33 11, like Moses talks to God face to face, the man talks to his friend. Stay in the presence of God, stay in the will of God, seek his will always for your life, and walk in the glory, in the glory realm. Do not get out of the will of God, or because your obedience means everything. That's when the presence of God will be in you, around you, and with you. And uh, so it says in Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, obtain grace and mercy, and help in times of need. And I was caught up to heaven at the throne, and Jesus put his hand on my head, and electricity went through my body, which is Romans 8, 11. If God's spirit dwells in you, he shall quicken your mortal body, right? And so... All these things God's been showing me is found in Amos chapter 3, verse, I believe it's 6 and 7. God does not reveal anything unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Uh, so, you're living in an end time age, so. Uh, surrender your life to Christ. Right? It's Amos 3, 7, the scripture. God doesn't reveal anything unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, their prophets. Uh, don't resist the Holy Spirit. Because uh, Jesus said in John 3, 3 and John 3, 5, you must be born of water and of the Spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven. So be baptized in the name of Jesus and uh, surrender your life to him and let him use you in these end times. Be a mouthpiece for God and, and, uh, yeah, please come to Jesus, all right? I love you guys and, uh, God bless you always. I'll see you later.